Welcome back to True Start Location Japan, Panda Gang. This episode, we're going to be trying to make as many settlers as we can out of Shizuoka here, our 40 production powerhouse city. Right now, settlers, it says, take six turns. I'll slot that in, but soon we'll put in the card too, plus 50%. That's going to be a settler every four turns. Recapping last video, we conquered Indonesia, so we've got a lot of new cities to assimilate into our empire. Some strong ones like Mataram here. It's got 18 science already. Now, as Japan, there's not a whole lot of places to settle. We can do a little bit more in the in Indonesian archipelago and as well to the north. We'll see where we can fit these in. Maybe some in North America as well. So we've discovered refining, which means oil. And it looks like just in our newly found land of Indonesia, one, two, three locations. I'll just quickly look around the rest of the empire. So good thing we conquered these Indonesians, man. Unfortunately, not even a single one of those was onshore. So we got to get this offshore, offshore rig, which is going to cost us a few more turns of technology. I think instead, though, we got a beeline for research labs and the other improvements that come along the way. We'll get some banks. We'll have our pastures do more. We can get some more housing from sewers and inevitably get that research lab building, get all that science. We have a ton of coal, so we can just burn right through that. Sink the world in water. Huh, maybe I can uh, send my envoys to Singapore. We'll get up to six. Now we're the suzerain and we can get this oil here. I'll see if my builder can actually get over there and do that. We'll remove that farm and next turn we'll upgrade the oil. My goal down here with Indonesia now is just build whatever things these guys were going for before, if that makes sense for me, like not temples, but shipyards. We're going to finish off this harbor. I like culture. But other than that, I want to get some builders out here, like get some mines going and then just use this as um, a staging ground for some more naval units. Uh, and then maybe we'll move on to attacking Australia or looking to the, the north here and the west of Japan. This is my biggest rival here, Yongle. If you take a look at the science game, I'm down here in the modern era, but he's all the way in the information era. It's not even close. So it's gonna be really hard to catch this guy. Um, luckily, the science difference is not too, too crazy. It's about 1,000, but that's another reason I wanna go for the, where is it, research lab before going too far down any other paths because I really gotta get that science going. There's our first city of the episode. Not too bad. I can get a sweet harbor down in between uh, this amber and this fish. I got some oil, coal to the north as well as oil once I can actually do some offshore drilling. I'm a little bit worried about this scout here. There was another scout to the north bringing some friends, but I do have some ships coming up from Indonesia to help out. This harbor right here, look at that six gold from the adjacency bonus. Okay, Yama's done its shipyard, and I just bought out this tile to get some place to put a campus down. It's next to a reef, but I really got to start on that science race versus Yongle. We got some barbarian action going on here to the north. If you just saw to the west, there was even more units that you can see right now. So hopefully we can clean up this camp over here quick. And in the meantime, we'll keep buffing up these tiles here. We got a lumber mill this turn. We'll get one more next turn right here. I'm going to go for the kill on this camp. Oh, come on. So close. And then this field cannon. Just move back, take a shot. Should survive. Hmm. This guy's getting into my land though. Get out of here, man. What are you doing? Okay, as for cards, I want to upgrade my boats and I got some units I want to improve as well. I'm building some builders in cities where I just don't know what else to build because, you know, that makes your civilization better. And there's one more I want to plug in down here, which is the plus 50% towards settlers. Now with our discount card plugged in, battleship only cost 155 to upgrade. Super cheap. Let's see that with all our guys here. We got one more. All right, and a new settler. Where shall we send them? I think the river over here looks promising. Just about six turns to get there, and we're clearing out the barbarian problem just in time. Oh man, line infantry, barely surviving here. Let's pick that up and let's go run for our very lives. We've made some reinforcements here in Kyoto, the field cannon. Gonna swap out to builders though, because I've actually got quite a big army coming up here to the north. Fufoka, great candidate to buy a trader out of. Send that to Shizoka, and it's going to be getting huge growth. I'm going to start subtly moving my units into position for a potential offensive on the Australians. I'm not sure if that's something I want to go for for certain, but our alliance ends in six turns, so we can turn it around on them pretty quick. And look, man, I like the Australians. I'm just trying to think, how the heck do I catch up to these Chinese here? My plan is to go with battleships. A lot of these cities have fully completed harbors. So you'll get better experience. Um, and almost all these Australian cities, they're on the coast. So that's the best unit against them, which I can also turn around and use against China if we have to go to war with them to stop them from winning by science. 
The modern era, here we come. And our spy coming in clutch, getting us the rocket re boost. Thank you. Looking at the game here. Chinese, they're in a golden age. Good for them. Australians, a normal age. So if we do decide to go to war with them in five turns, which seems kind of likely, we'll have a little bit easier of a time holding those cities due to loyalty. Now, looking at these dedications. Last era, I went with Heartbeat of Steam because you get um, not necessarily the Wonders. I didn't build any of those, but the Campus District Adjacency Bonus gives you production as well. Now, that's pretty huge for a lot of these cities with pretty awesome science bonuses. But this time, I'm going to go with the Two Arms, not just for the Grievances, but 15% production towards military units. This is going to be the only way we can catch up to China is by doing some conquering and maybe just going to war with them to stop them from winning the game. Man, these traders to Shizuoka, five food, three production, plus three and three science culture. I mean, that's great for the empire, but just for this city, five food, three production, that's exactly what the city was making already. So it just doubles for free. All right, so we've upgraded all of our units. I'm going to swap out this card for the press gangs, double my production towards all those boats I'm going to make. And I'm no longer going to use this 100% campus adjacency bonus because Heartbeat of Steam is no longer in play. To replace that, I'm going to go with Industrial Zone adjacency bonuses. Damn, Canada coming out with the deals. Two great works of art. Not bad. Finally got some troops into what looks to be like Alaska. And they've got straight up warriors out here, man. They're not doing much. Getting a look here at Australia's defenses. I don't see any boats just yet. I'll keep exploring. Still nothing. We'll go around the other side. Looks like they got a lot of land units from when I went and looked at earlier, but no cities in the interior. So pretty vulnerable from an attack in the sea. Now I've got to send all the ironclads back. They are doing automated exploration. So I just searched for them, two, three. Now I think this should show enemy ones too. There we go, yeah. But pretty helpful in case you're wondering, oh, where did my units go? Now it looks like one of the furthest away will take 10 turns, which is a long time, but Battleships will do most of the work anyways. In Makassar, I've saved up some money to buy the electronics factory. Uh, and then we're gonna put the coal plant in right away here too. It's just so crucial for these cities here. Um, Mataram, Jakarta, Palembang, and Jambi, they can all benefit from this industrial zone, even though its placement is quite questionable. And I just don't think the Indonesians built any other factories. So especially when you're in a place where, when you're on some land where there's not much production, it's mostly sea. Getting something like a factory up here is super crucial. Man, my housing situation is terrible. I really need to get some sewers going. Where are those? Back here. Okay, two away. One, then two. That's some questionable pathing. Wow, our unit's just barely surviving here. Calculated so perfectly. There we go, take you out. And then I'll take this guy back into our land and heal up. Free recon unit out of that goodie hut. Thank you very much. Send them merrily on their way. We can find some more of this barren wasteland. I'm gonna go spend a bunch of envoys. I got three more coming up with conservation. I'll put that into a Hattusa, the science city state, uh, just to take advantage of this. But in the meantime, we can get the six envoys from Lahore and from Valletta. And if I can get the battleship here too, I get the suzerain bonus that lets me buy um, buildings in the encampment district and uh, just regular city center buildings with faith. In the meantime too, Plus three production for cities with a military academy. So let's confirm that placement. Because look here in Shizuoka, we've got a military academy. Awesome. As for settling down this city here, I've chosen this spot. It lets me get these two deer. Um, it lets me share a little bit with Yokohama. There's a, there's a chance, hey, if I put an aqueduct here, Yokohama can put an industrial zone here and get that adjacency bonus. It also is close enough so that I can get this sweet, in, um, not encampment, uh, campus district right here with the adjacencies and it leaves space for one more city to the northeast. Now, I had no idea I was even in the running for this, but this city of Victoria seems to have rebelled. Some Canadian city here. Uh, the fate, the loyalty is only falling at two per turn, so I mean, I might as well keep the city. Now that we've got that suzerainty from, actually we don't have it just yet, uh, from Valletta, but once we train a battleship, we will. I should be able to purchase the monument with faith settler complete in shizoka and let's build another man only five for a new one now we just settled one up here amori um i'm tempted to go one more on the river but another place i'm interested in is the chinese border here as you can see they're expanding to the north too and whatever cities i can stop them from getting is like two cities for me shizoka getting a sneaky chop out here with the builder let's see if that does the whole settler 
Dang, four turns, all right. Oh man, what have we found here to the north in Alaska? A double settler. There are some scary musket men and a crossbow man. Hopefully my recon unit survives, but what a find. If I can get both those settlers and this spy again, another science stolen, well done. There's our next settler from chopping out at Shizoka. We'll send them up north here and we'll try and get another settle on this river. Whoa, look at this barbarian outpost. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Here comes the fight. Oh, only one. They're kind of scared. Australia, man, my troops are not passing by. The tables are gonna turn on you quick, man. Stealing even more, the spy, oh my gosh. Look over here, man, just like I was saying, these Chinese, they wanna settle to the north too. We finally stamped out the barbarians on this fiery island. Look at all these volcanoes. We got a settler out here before too long. I've pretty much lost the need for this builder card, so I'm gonna slot in 100% Harbor bonus, we'll see how that impacts our next turn. Oh, there we go. 360, 413, 50 gold, I'll take that. And I'm just gonna park as many of my boats as I can on the border of Australia here, and we'll see what happens in a couple turns. Oh, Curtin's mad because I destroyed Indonesia, buddy, you're next. Just sold off 100 oil for 200 gold per turn for the next 30 turns. That's what, 6,000 gold? Slingers, what's going on, barbarians? Okay, I got two battleships here just about coming out. I've got some a few turns later down here in the Indonesian region. So, in maybe about five turns, I'll have way more battleships. And down here in Nagoya, too, I'll have one more coming out that's an ironclad. So, I'm going to take this moment to go ahead and declare war on these Australians. Let's see, cast a spell eye. Golden Age War, let's do it. Man, there's no time to wait around. This is all about China here, 542 science. If we take a look at the world rankings, where is science? There we are. They're in securely in, in first place. They've already got all of these preliminary guys and they've researched satellites. So they're not too far off of finishing this and I've not even gotten started on a spaceport. The first city in my sights is Perth. It's right here on the coast. So my ironclads can slide right in and do some damage to them. Now this guy's used up most of his movement, but I do have a bunch of battleships, so why don't I start putting them to use? So this city is super strong for some reason. Not sure how this stuff works, but we've got three battleships firing at it and it's down to half health in one turn. So one or two from now, we'll be able to take it. Everyone's so surprised I'm going to war again. The Australian response was pretty soft. All I see here is the light cavalry, cavalry unit coming into the sea. So we've just got, got nationalism. This will let us create corps and fleets. That's gonna be super helpful, scaling up into the late game here. Tokyo's battleship is complete. That means I should have suzerainty over Valada. No, someone else put an envoy there. That's okay, we'll just have to get another envoy. But that means Tokyo is now freed up to make a sewer. You're gonna notice a similar trend with a lot of these cities that built as battleships. Reinforcements should arrive in just three turns. That's fantastic. And just in time because Perth just got walls. This battleship's in a pretty precarious position, actually. I should have backed it off. But Perth can attack as well as this bombard here. Shizoka's created us another settler. Looking up here to the northeast, we've got a settler here by the river. I'm gonna set them just a little bit further uh, and then settle down here. I've got another settler to the northeast, which can settle on this river here. So I'll send a new settler to this little peninsula here. There's actually some super underrated yields. Look at this, five food. If I settle a city on each of these two tacks, this one on the south can reach all the way to this five food tile, and this one over here as well can reach that far, both without being in danger of these dangerous volcanoes. It looks like my warriors were a little bit unfounded. This ironclad barely took any damage, and over here it looks like the bombard decided not even to attack my battleship, and this battleship taking the wall attack didn't do too much damage. So we're going to end the video off there, guys. This episode we settled a ton of cities. Look up here. One, two, and then over here in Alaska as well, we're just filling out this continent. Next episode, we'll be looking a little bit more towards Australia, see if we can conquer that whole continent of Oceania here and hopefully compete with Yongle in this science race.